Well, hello everyone, my name is Christopher Frost and it's great to see you uh, on the Lauer, uh, Venus Optics Lauer YouTube page. I hope you can hear me. My internet connection here is terribly, terribly slow uh, because I live in Wales. Uh, I live uh, right in the middle of the countryside and yeah, my internet connection is just awful. Uh, but maybe you can see me okay, maybe I'm moving around and you can hear me. Uh, if you have things for me, if you have any questions, just write them away on the comments, on the Facebook page, or on YouTube. Um, yeah, and I really look forward to hearing some questions from you. Now before I get any questions, I just get down to talking to you, if, if any of you have anything you want to say or ask me. Before I do that, I just want to um, say that I'm really excited about this weekly uh, series of videos all about macro photography. I'm really excited because most of us in the entire world are going to be just stuck at home and macro photography is brilliant for when you're indoors and you've got nothing else to do. It's the ultimate in rainy day photography because it's fun and you can discover a whole new world of details and objects and the everyday things you see around your house, especially in your kitchen with all your food stuff, but also in toys um, and also in your garden, in plants, if you're lucky enough to have a garden, in your money, in your cash, in your wallet, um, all over the place. You can find fascinating uh, small things to take pictures of and you can also set yourself up with little challenges at the same time. I know that Venus Optics are doing that on their Facebook page, actually setting up a, a macro photography challenge uh, for while we're all stuck indoors. So go for that, give that a quick try. Um, you can also set up macro photography challenges for your friends. Uh, you can take a series of pictures and put them in a special album on Facebook. Um, and just get people to try and guess what on earth it is that you've taken pictures of. Uh, it's absolutely fascinating macro photography and you need special lenses to do that. Well, any lens at all, you can take a picture of something small and try and crop into it as best as you can. Uh, oh, I'm just going to check my live stream. Uh, and you can, yeah, try and crop in as best as you can. But a macro lens lets you get so much closer. Uh, up to, well, most normal macro lenses take you to one-to-one -to -one magnification, which is life-size according to the sensor uh, of your camera. So that's pretty nice and close. Although you can get some more specialized macro lenses, which, which take you to two times magnification or even five times magnification. If you want to get even closer than that, then of course you need a, a microscope or an electron microscope or something along those lines. You've got to watch out as well. Uh, some macro lenses don't take you all the way to one-to-one uh, -to -one magnification. So a good example of that is um, this Canon lens, 35mm uh, f1.8 for the RF mount. Ignore the red ring, I added that myself. That only takes you to half life size. Uh, but, of course, this uh, Venus Optics Nauer 100mm uh, macro lens um, can take you up to two times magnification, which is incredibly close to your subject, and you can get some really, really dramatic images. And that's something I wanted to talk about in my re uh, review of this 100mm <laughs> lens uh, when I made it a couple of years ago. And that's something that um, I found really interesting when I was comparing macro lenses for my latest video. If you check out my YouTube channel, I've just finished um, making uh, a special comparison video of six uh, macro lenses in the 100mm focal length kind of area, 90mm, 100, 105. Um, and that was fascinating because I got to, to check out the performance of all these macro lenses from different manufacturers, including Nikon for the first time ever. Uh, my very first Nikon lens review is there and uh, their 100 millimeter macro lens didn't turn out didn't turn out to be very good actually uh, I was pretty surprised by its performance um, but that that's been so interesting to me to look at at the differences between all the different macro lenses on the market in that kind of segment and uh, a lot of them have autofocus and image stabilization which 
which really helps you to get pictures more easily. But people who are more interested in, in macro photography as a serious pursuit will tend to find themselves manually focusing their lenses quite a lot. Quite often serious manu uh, macro photographers will uh, use a tripod or, or set their camera up on some kind of mount or on a book or on a cushion um, and just manually focus to get exactly what they need. Autofocus doesn't always work that well at very, very close distances. So don't be afraid of getting a macro lens with manual, which is manual focus only, if uh, you're interested in serious uh, macro photography, if you really, really want to give it a good try. So I'm just trying to think what else to say uh, before I start looking at questions. Um, yes, um, what there are one or two challenges, technical challenges to macro uh, photography. When you're working that closely to your subject, um, you'll find that camera shake is emphasized quite a lot and, it, and it's a lot harder to get a, um, a sharp image. So you're going to have to, if you're shooting handheld, doing handheld macro photography, make sure you either use a very high ISO level on your camera in order to get a sharp picture, or make sure that you shoot in bright, uh, in daylight, or even better, in bright sunlight. If you're shooting in bright sunlight, it can be a good idea to use a polarizing filter at the same time to eliminate any harsh reflections off of your subject. So those are some technical limitations. Uh, with uh, very close up uh, photography, with macro photography. Also, your image reaching your sensor will be a lot darker. Um, uh, the aperture or, or, or the effective aperture, the effective brightness of your image will be much, much darker. So, so that causes problems as well for camera shakes. So, so make sure you use very high ISO levels or just head on outside and you know onto your windowsill with your tiny little subjects and take pictures from there, just anywhere where there's as much light as possible. And also, there's, um, there are options out there for macro photography lights. Um, you can get these macro photography lights which actually attach to the front of your camera and circular lights and they, they attach to your hot shoe, or well, most of them do anyway, and enable you to get extra light for shooting close up. And there are also one or two lenses out there which have that built in. So I know a number of Canon lenses are now featuring uh, LED lights around the edge. And also I think the Venus Optics, the probe lens, the Lauer 24mm f, uh, whatever it is, f14 probe lens uh, has built in lights as well, I think. Uh, so that that's useful as well. Um, if you're seriously into macro photography, consider getting some kind of lighting rig. Uh, if you check out Thomas Shahan's videos on YouTube, you can also see how he uses a, a normal flash, an onboard, no, not onboard, uh, an external flash, but with a special reflecting hood, you can get light on your, onto your subject easily that way as well. So those are some of the challenges of macro photography, which you will have probably come into yourself just shooting anything that's close up. Uh, before I answer questions, uh, I just want to say um, it's prob it might not be a bad thing that I'm the first person doing one of these live streams in this series of eight that Venus Optics are featuring, because the first uh, because I'm not I'm not going to pretend to be an expert macro photographer. There are better macro photographers out there who've gotten amazing images, which you can see all over Flickr. For me, um, it's just a very strong hobby and, and the YouTube channel is so enjoyable. Um, but something I do know about is the quality of different macro lenses and which ones to go for, their strengths and weaknesses, because I've just tested so many of them now. It's, God, my mind is bending just thinking about how many macro lenses I've tested now. It must be 20 or 25, especially recently. And the very first thing you need to do is to buy a macro lens if you want to get into macro photography before you do anything else, uh, before you learn how to do it. And that's an area where hopefully I can help you uh, a little bit. So feel free to ask some questions. So I'm just going to check on the YouTube connection uh, to see if any questions have come up. Uh, as I told you, uh, my internet connection is unbelievably slow. Um, it has real, real trouble. So I don't have YouTube running right now, but 
if I can bring it up. Ah, oh, here we go. I'm sorry if this causes any weird interference or anything else. Oh, I can see it is live. I have no idea what the picture quality is like, though. Will you I'll learn how to do it? There we go. I'm going to mute that. Have I had any questions? No, I can't see any questions yet. Ah, well, I can't see any questions on YouTube anyway. So if I have a look at the Venus Optics Facebook page, maybe I can see some questions there. If anyone wants to ask me anything, uh, you can ask me all kinds of questions if you want to. Uh, questions, questions. Ah, oh, we are open for questions. Great, let's see. Ah, well, it looks like people are asking questions to Venus Optics. But not to me, not yet anyway. Let me see, let me see. Do I have any questions? Not yet. Well, that's all right. I can wait. <laughs> well, uh, if you have any questions about macro photography or about different kinds of macro lenses, or if you'd like to know a little bit about my testing method or what my findings were with my recent uh, six lens comparison video, then do go ahead and ask um, on Facebook and I can actually see, oh, I've just had a question coming up on Facebook. Yes, I've had, oh yeah, oh, a whole bunch of questions. Oh, I don't even know where to start. All right, hold on then. Ah, ah, there's so many. All right, the first one I can see is from Alok Sahu, which says, how does the lower 100 millimeter macro compare with the Canon 100 millimeter macro? All right, so, let me start with that one, I suppose, because I've just, I've just finished a big comparison video. I might be able to offer you something there. There are two um, Canon 100mm macro lenses. One is really quite old now. It has an ultrasonic motor. It doesn't have uh, image stabilization. And that one has a slightly older optical formula, but it's fairly sharp. And Canon, uh, about 10 years ago, released an L lens, a 100mm macro L lens, which had which actually really impressed people at the time when it came out. It had quite a sophisticated uh, image stabilization system for its time, a hybrid one. Um, whenever I've tested Canon 100 millimeter macro lenses, they haven't tested as well as I thought they would. So they have a stellar reputation. They're meant to be really, really sharp, but I've tested the, the normal 100 millimeter macro lens, the the non-L, and I've tested, I think it's two or three copies of the L lens. Uh, I tested another one recently, and it just wasn't as sharp as I thought it would be at f2.8, uh, which really took me by surprise because it's an expensive lens, it's an, it's an L lens. Um, so a key difference that you'll see between the Lauer and Canon lenses is that the Venus Optics lens, and this surprised me as well, um, it's quite a bit sharper with better contrast, especially at the widest apertures. Now, I'm not just saying that because I'm on the Venus channel. Um, I remember testing the 100mm Lauer lens quite a while ago now, and I was just blown away by how sharp it is. And when I tested it on my 42 megapixel Sony camera, well, as you'll see in my comparison video, it was the sharpest of the lot. Um, the Sony 90mm lens was very, very, very close. But uh, if you're thinking of the differences between the Canon and the Lauer lens, uh, there's a bit of a sharpness difference there. There are mechanical differences. Obviously, the Canon lens is a lot more money, but it does have autofocus and image stabilization, which does make life a little bit easier, of course. Um, but when it comes to image quality, another interesting difference is that um, the Lauer lens has so little longitudinal chromatic aberration. So I'm going to try and find you a picture uh, on my desktop, on my hard drive, which will actually show you what that means. And I don't think I can find it right now. Um, never mind. Oh, I know where it is. It's in one of my messages. So give me just a moment and I'll find a picture that illustrates the difference of longitudinal chromatic aberration between the two lenses. And um, longitudinal chromatic aberration is sometimes known by some people as color bokeh. It's when you get these weird colorful highlights in the background and foreground behind and in front of your um, subject. 
and it's especially noticeable oh here we are um, it's especially noticeable when you're shooting uh, close up yeah when you're shooting close up and obviously with macro photography you're doing that all the time so the last thing you want is loads and loads of um, longitudinal chromatic aberration so but the best thing for me to do is just to show you what that is which I can do right now and there you go so you can see <laughs> yeah hopefully that should have come straight up so this was this was the result of my test uh, between six different uh, macro lenses so you can see at the top left the Canon 100 millimeter lens shows a bit of green highlighting uh, beyond the plane of focus and pink before and that's very very common with the other lenses as well they all show a bit of that but the lower lens is an apochromatic lens uh, in the true sense of the word in that a uh, chromatic aberration is uh, well corrected both laterally and longitudinally and, and to me that's just a huge treat that that's just an amazing bonus because it means that it's well um it's just well oh, oh hold on oh there we go you can see me again it means it's well connect uh it's just so well equipped for for close-up shooting in that sense it's really really wonderful so yeah those are some of the those are the three key differences i think now let me see i'm wondering if i have any more uh, questions. I must have a few. Uh, let me see. So, oh, I got Robert Beasley. Hello, Robert Beasley. So, I'm going to read this out. I have no idea what people are going to ask me. So, uh, Robert Beasley says, for someone who is used to shooting wides and landscapes or cityscapes, what subject would you recommend starting if trying to get into macro photography? So, so I guess, Robert, you're someone who likes to shoot wide-angle pictures. Uh, there are wide-angle uh, um, macro lenses out there. I mean, there's the one I showed you just a minute ago. If you own a, a Canon mirrorless camera, that's really fun. Uh, another good one by Venus Optics is the 15mm uh, f4 macro lens. And that's interesting for cityscapes because it's got this, this really interesting uh, tilt-shift feature well I'm not sure if it tilts it it just shifts which actually adjusts um, your architecture and gets your bendy lines straight so that's a lens you might be interested in um, the Venus Optics Lauer 15 millimeter um, f4 um, yeah f4 yeah f4 and actually I can give you a discount code for that um, Venus Optics are giving me some discount codes for that um, and if you if you get one, I think within a week or so, then you'll get a little five percent discount on that. Uh, so there we go. Um, if you're really into your wide angle photography, there are macro lenses out there that are made by Canon and Nikon and Sony. Uh, but a really cool one is the Venus 15 millimeter uh, macro lens. Check out my review on the internet. A uh, really really interesting piece of equipment um, with a number of strange and unusual features. All right, I've got uh, another question here. I've got John Hansen, which is asking me, Hi, Christopher Frost. What was the most atrocious lens you've ever tested? What's the worst lens? I made a special video about this uh, um, a few years ago. It was called um, um, The Five Softest Camera Lenses I Ever Tested. And there was some real trash there. Just really, really useless, plastic, cheap, pancake lenses, which were incredibly soft. The worst one was called the lens cap. Oh, I can't, I can't remember what it's called, but if you go onto YouTube and check out my video, which is the five softest camera lenses ever tested, it was a camera lens about this thin, and it just went straight onto your digital SLR camera, um, and, it's, uh, and it, it was just awful. It was so, so, so soft. It must have had only three or four glass elements inside totally useless there are some soft ones out there um, recently I tested I haven't published this test yet but I've published a test of um, a pinhole lens uh, I've done a few of those before but this is a zoomable pinhole lens by Thingify uh, and that's particularly bad and annoying to use as well even if you're into um, lamography so I don't recommend that yeah, if you take a look on my channel for the five softest lenses I ever tested, you'll see ones that made me really angry and uh, stressed me out enormously. All right, so um, what else have 
I got. I'm just trying to see what else. Uh, hmm. There's another question here saying, how do you soften the light better? Right, how do you soften the light better? I presume that means with, um, with when you're doing macro photography. So um, something I like to do, well, this is just a general question about lighting really, isn't it? A really good thing to do is to get um, uh, a ring light to go around your lens. Um, now I think Venus Optics sell these over on their website as well as another uh, a number of other manufacturers. You can get them all over the place. Um, they just attach around the edge of your lens. That's I have always found the most success when trying to get nice soft light very very close up. I just found that really successful and really easy to use as well. So check out ring lights that ring lights that go around the edge uh, of your macro lens. They're incredibly useful, uh, so I do recommend those. They just seem to produce really soft light. Another option is just to go outside on a cloudy day. Outside on a cloudy day, you'll always get lovely soft light. It won't be the strongest light in the world, but it comes from all directions. Um, that's something else that I recommend. Um, yeah, you want to avoid going outside and shooting on a very bright sunny day and putting your subject in the sunlight obviously although again you can use um, a polarizing filter to try and get rid of any harsh reflections that that might come out of that all right so i'm going to see if there are any more questions at all keep the questions coming i'm quite enjoying this actually um all right i've got another another question it says and it's from George Featherby. Hi, George. Uh, oh, I like your surname, Featherby. That's great. Um, thanks for your hard work. I enjoyed the review and am mostly leaning towards the Lauer 100mm lens, but was wondering if Lauer have any plans to release a Cine EF version of this lens with built-in focus gearing. And what is the focus throw on the existing lens? Well, I can't tell you, um, I don't work for Venus Optics, uh, so I can't really tell you anything about um, whether they're planning a Cine EF version of the lens. Maybe they are, that would probably be a good idea, wouldn't it, for, for people using Cine lenses. Uh, so when it comes to the 100 millimeter lens, so I've got it here. Yep, there we go, I've got one right there. So the focus throw is averagely precise. It's not the most precise in the world, but it does get you where you need to go, uh, especially, especially if you're, you're focusing carefully. Uh, so I, I personally didn't have any problems with the focus throw on this 100 millimeter lens. I found it to be all right. I'm quite used to manually focusing lenses. I do it all the time for, for the YouTube channel. Um, so I didn't have any problems. Uh, if you're a beginner, you'll probably want to practice a little bit and yeah, just get some practice in. But also, um, what makes it easier is that the, the, the focus ring is quite well damped. So it does turn quite smoothly. It's not sticky at all. You can adjust it very, very slightly if you want to. And that's always a pleasure to see a nicely damped focus ring. That's one of my favorite things to do. And you tend to get those in manual uh, focus lenses a lot more anyway. In fact, I remember uh, testing Canon's 100 millimeter macro lenses. I, I found the manual focus ring just certainly not as smooth uh, as one of these manual focus lenses. But then again, it has to be coupled to the autofocus motor. So, so on an autofocus lens, you very often won't get quite the same level of precision or, or that enjoyable manual focus um, experience. That's just my opinion though, anyway. Um, I hope that's, hope that's helpful. Uh, that's what I found. So I'll see if there are any more questions as well. I've got something from Richard Wong here. Hi, Richard. It says, hi, Chris, which lower macro lens would you recommend for a first time macro shooter? They all seem so good. All right, gosh, I'm talking about lower lenses quite a lot here, but there we go. I suppose that's because I'm on a lower stream. Welcome everyone. So um, there are a number of Venus Optics lenses I've tested over the years. And I do just want to say something. I, I'm not just saying this because I'm on the Lauer Facebook page and YouTube stream. I genuinely mean this. I always look forward to testing out new Venus Optics lenses. I really do. Because after testing, I mean, I've tested like 280 
at least different camera lenses, different camera lenses, and they start to get a little bit samey as you go along. I really enjoy testing them, but you know, one hundred millimeter f two point eight lens is very similar to another, or fifty millimeter one point four, or twenty four millimeter one point eight, whatever. Um, you see the same thing again and again and again, but I've always enjoyed um, borrowing Venus Optics lenses for testing because they do something different. Um, there's always something different about them, like the the 100mm STF, 105 I think, STF f2 lens gives you beautifully uh, blurry, uh, beautiful bokeh, or the 15mm macro lens, the ultra-wide angle lens, which can also focus really, really closely just amazing features and also features a, a, a shift shift mechanism like there's always something a little bit different about venus optics lenses which which makes me incredibly happy so so i just wanted to say that really um when it comes to which one to start with as a beginner um that's up to you really um have a look at lens reviews i'm going to plug myself here and and tell you just to have a look at some of my lens reviews this is one of the best things you can do if you're if you're thinking of buying any lens or just learning more about them is watching reviews and that's how i got into my youtube channel just by reading uh, lens reviews on the internet on dp review or photozone or whatever it was or optical limits it's called now um seeing the review websites made me so passionate and gave me such a great idea of what lenses do so the first thing you should do if you're a beginner really is to decide what focal length you want whether you want something really wide like uh, 15 millimeter or or maybe uh, maybe you want this 100 millimeter lens that will be a bit more of a challenge for you as a beginner because it'll be slightly trickier to focus at 100 millimeter but i think venus optics yes they make a 60 millimeter lens which is very much like this as well which is smaller and a bit less expensive and uh, you'll find yourself you'll find manually focusing a bit easier at 60 millimeter than it is at 100 millimeter so if you're a beginner yeah you want that wide angle lens i think I'm just going to double check all my settings and make sure everything's still working. I'm amazed this, this is working so well right now. Yeah, it's still working. My computer was crashing before. And again, I just want to say, um, if you head on over to Venus Optics website, uh, I've got a discount code for you, uh, which I don't know where. I'll put that. I'll write that down somewhere for you, uh, which can give you a little discount on, on anything you buy. I'll, I can tell you the discount code. It's lowercase letters and it's CF. 3M44. So that's CF3M44. So if you do want to buy anything from the Venus Optics website uh, as a result of this video or just generally, uh, head on over there and put that code in um, and it'll give you a little discount. And that's for the first 20 customers uh, there. So that, that discount will last for 20 customers. So so there you go, do that sooner rather than later. And the discount code is CF3M44, CF3M44. All right, next question. I'm really, really enjoying this. This is the first time I've done any kind of live streaming. I was really nervous, but you know, it's kind of fun. And it says, hello, Chris. Do you think the lower 25 millimeter F2.8, 2.5 to 5 times magnification lens can be shot handheld? I was wondering it, if I can use it in my underwater housing. Normally, I use the Canon 100mm f2.8. Right, I, I can't <laughs> give you advice about using a lens like that in underwater housing. My guess is that it might not work all that well. But I, I, and, I, and the lens you're mentioning in question, that 25mm lens, I've heard good things about it. I haven't actually tested it myself. I have tested other uh, macro lenses which give you five times magnification. They're very difficult to shoot handheld. They're really difficult because when you're getting to that level of magnification, your image is so dark um, that your shutter speeds have to be really low and getting a sharp picture is, is hard work. Um, your only real option is to shoot, if you want to shoot handheld with a, at five times magnification, is to shoot outside in bright sunlight. If you want to go handheld, that's the level of light you'll need. You might be able to get a lighting rig that works, maybe, a, as I was mentioning before, one of those ring lights. I, I, I never really tried that. 
but really the amount of light you need is a lot. Um, so ideally you should really use a tripod or something like that or a cushion. Cushions are also very good. You can buy special photography uh, cushions or bean bags. Uh, bean bags are very enjoyable to use and, and you can put them on the side window of your car and shoot out of them. Uh, that's what I recommend. You can shoot, of course you can shoot with any lens handheld and if you sh uh, shoot with a very high ISO you'll you'll get there, you'll get there. But um, yeah, you kind of want some kind of stabilization for that. All right. Oh, I've got something. I've got another question from Robert Beasley. Hi, Robert. You asked me another question, didn't you? All right, great. Sometimes I love to change things up and shoot with old vintage lenses with a lot of character. Are there any vintage macro lenses that you've come across? I'm so sorry, I haven't really tested any vintage macro lenses before, never. Um, I'm tempted to test more vintage lenses and recently on my channel, I tested some very old Canon L lenses and that was really interesting. They were from 1980, some very early Canon FD lenses, they're early L lenses with very bright apertures of f1.2. That was great. I, I recommend popping over onto my channel under the Canon lens reviews and taking a look at those vintage lenses because that was good fun. And uh, yeah, the amount of flaring they put was just unbelievable. Um, and their contrast in things. I'm not a huge believer in vintage lenses, although I will, obviously they're great value for money. They're, they're really good value for money. But lens technology really has moved on so much over the years. And, and whenever I've tested a vintage lens, there have been, sometimes the sharpness has been good, but there have been disappointing things about them as well. Um, so I just don't do it. And also, I, I don't test many vintage lenses on my channel because I don't have time. Uh, my YouTube channel, I mean, I have a full-time job. I'm a vicar and that takes up loads and loads of my time. The, the YouTube channel is something I work very hard at in my spare time whenever I have time. So I, I have to review newer lenses, really, because, well, more people are going to watch those reviews. Um, so that's my priority. So sorry, I'd love to test more vintage lenses, but I just can't. Now, I, I think I'm over my half an hour uh, limit, but it's not actually a limit. I can keep going if I want to, or I've been told I can keep going. And I think I will. I'll just keep going until someone tells me to, you know, close my big mouth. Um, well, actually, gosh, I can't see any more questions. Oh, any more questions, anyone? I'll try refreshing uh, my page. I want to double check that we're still going. Are we still going? Am I still broadcasting? Oh, I don't know. Yes, yes, I think I am. Oh, I'm so pleased about that. Uh, any more questions, anyone? No, no, I don't think so. All right. I'll just have a look through. I'm just going to have a look through all your lovely comments. It's not. No, I can't. I can't see many more. Yeah, not many more questions. How about on YouTube? Am I getting many questions on YouTube or many comments? I'm going to go and take a look. As you can tell, as I mentioned, I'm very new to <laughs> live live streaming. Uh, so I'm going to check on YouTube if there are any problem, any questions. Um, no, 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 can't see anything there either. All right, well, if that's about, oh, Oh wait, one last question then, one last question. They seem to be drying up, but I'll, I'll do one last one. Uh, you, oh, it does say YouTube has some questions. Wow, what are the questions? Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh yes, good, good, good. All right, more questions. All right, Don Davis, Don Davies. That sounds like a Welsh name. Are you from Wales, Don Davies? Um, Christopher, is the Lauer 100 millimeter an internal focus lens, what's the closest you can get to your subject? Well, it's sort of an internal focus lens because you can see as I change focus, nothing nothing happens there. But you can see the front element does move in and out. So the best thing to do for that really, to keep it weather sealed, is to pop, pop a, a filter on there. Now, I mostly put, use high quality UV filters on my most precious camera lenses whenever I can just for protection really, but you'll want to do that with this lens just to protect it from any dust and you can see the internals there. So it's it's sort of internal focus I suppose. And when it comes to how close you can actually get, 
Um, let me have a look. So, <laughs> I'll try getting really close to my camera. All right, I am about, oh gosh, wow. That is very close actually. Right now, the front of the lens is about that far away. So I think we're looking at seven or eight centimeters. So the front of the lens will be seven to eight centimeters, I think, uh, from your subject, which is pretty close actually, but that's such a huge magnification there. Two times magnification, that's really big. I'm sure you can check the specs of the lens online to find more information. Uh, all right, someone's asking. Any plans on testing some Viltrox lenses for Fuji X mount? Well, when they come out, there's some new ones coming out soon. So yeah, I look forward to testing those out. I think they were delayed or something. Oh, we've got another one from Aldo Maria Ibello. Hey Chris, what is your opinion on speed lights and flash for macro photography? And, oh yeah, and also the, the Viltrox question. Speed lights and flash for macro photography. There are loads of things you can do. As I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this video, my favorite thing is ring lights. You can get all kinds on the market. You can get, I remember getting a really cheap one online for, for 30 pounds or something, a ring light, uh, which adjusted, attached to your camera, but it didn't work properly and it didn't sync properly with my camera. So if you get a ring macro light, um, you probably want to get a, a decent quality one and don't waste your money on cheap ones. And I do think Venus Optics make one, which is on their website. And I'll just give you that discount code again, uh, which is CF3M44, CF3M44. So that's really, to me, that's the most recommendable one, a ring light that goes around the edge, uh, just attaches to the front of your, your camera. That gives you lovely soft light coming directly from the source it's uh, it's controllable it, it, it's it's great that's the best thing to do but um some people will use a normal uh, attached you, know, you can you can really use if your camera has a built-in flash you won't really be able to use that it's in the wrong place but some people use um an external flash and there are various soft boxes you can make which which aim the light downwards and reflect the light down onto your subject. You can get great results doing that as well. And again, I'm going to plug him, uh, Thomas Shahan. He's never done anything for me, but I really like his YouTube channel. He's a nice guy. Uh, check out his YouTube channel, Thomas Shahan. And I think he's going to be doing one of these live streaming events in seven weeks time or so. I think he's the last one to, maybe, maybe. Uh, um, yeah, so those are some of your options as well. So, any more questions? Oh, I've got another one from Robert Beasley. This is like your third question. Oh, I, I'm glad you're enjoying this. All right, any chances of a workshop or talk at the photography show oh, in Birmingham if it goes ahead in September? I don't know, I don't know if it will go ahead in September. Things are pretty crazy around here in the UK. I really hope it does. I'm a bit sick and tired of being stuck indoors all day long. Uh, but the photography show, I was gutted. Um, that it uh, that the photography show in Birmingham was cancelled. I had my press pass ready, and I was I wanted to meet all the all the lovely people from different manufacturers, and I was going to to announce something on my YouTube community page, just to say I was going and when I was going because you know I wouldn't mind meeting some of my fans. Actually, I I do actually <laughs> meet people occasionally who recognise my voice or have heard my voice before and and uh, want to talk to me. Someone recognized my wife uh, from my lens reviews once. Uh, a guy working in an Apple store, an, an Apple bar genius, recognized my wife and asked me if uh, if she knew me. Um, yeah, so so I'm not pl planning to do a workshop or anything at, at Birmingham if, if the photography show comes back. But uh, yeah, I'll certainly go and, and I'll let people know when I'm going and yeah, maybe we can meet up. That, that could be really, really fun. All right, I've got another question from YouTube from Better Carrotin. Better Carrotin. Hmm. Uh, good evening. Good evening. It seems that the only modern macro lens you haven't reviewed yet is the Fuji 80mm. Any plans to review that lens? Oh, it drove me nuts. When I released this comparison video yesterday of six different lenses, everyone was asking me, why haven't you reviewed the Tokina 100mm macro lens and why haven't you reviewed the, the Fuji 80mm? So the Tokina, 
a hundred millimeter macro lens everyone talks about that i just haven't had the chance to give it a go yet sorry about that and i wanted six lenses in the video because then it fitted perfectly together on the screen everyone one or two people really annoyed that i that i didn't put the tokina lens on sorry about that um there just wasn't room in the review and testing those six lenses and editing the video were, oh, it was a marathon it was a nightmare uh, normally my videos take two or three hours to edit i'm quite careful this one took 16 to 18 hours tr just trying to edit that video i've just put out oh it was it was really hard work so if i'd put more lenses in there i just would have had a breakdown when it comes to the fuji lens well uh, that's only for aps-c cameras so so it wouldn't have quite worked on the comparison uh, lens uh, on the comparison video i made sorry um but yes I, I am planning to test that one soon planning to test some more fuji lenses as and when i can get my hands on them because uh, they're really nice too fuji lenses and yanni uh, has a question hi yanni what do you do for your full-time job actually uh, i'm a vicar which is a church leader uh, in the the church in wales here in the uk a vicar um so as a vicar i i do church leadership and i also um in the UK, being a vicar is kind of a bit of a role in your community as well. You don't just hide hide in some church. You you help people in your local community. Uh, you help them with weddings and funerals and baptisms. And, and um, you go to community meetings and you help at schools. You do all kinds of things like that. So that is my full-time job, uh, which is very enjoyable but unbelievably hard work. And that takes up nearly all my time. Um, yeah, very enjoyable job very hard work um, and I, because of this coronavirus outbreak I, I, there's, I can't do it very well I'm just having to make videos at home with, with sermons and talks and and um, and make videos for children so so there we go that's my full-time job all right I've got another question here what is the best macro lens for micro four thirds that's a difficult question for me to answer because I've never tested any micro four thirds equipment. I'm just not a huge fan uh, of the camera. So, so I, sorry, I don't think I can answer that one. Uh, sorry, Norbert. But I've had another question from someone called. Um, oh, my goodness. Ah, all right. Well, I've got someone from Greece. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to go with Achilles Labru has got an interesting question. Best, best wishes from Athens, he says. Does the reciprocal rule of shutter speed, can that be used with ultra-wide lenses with handheld shooting? I have the Lauer 10 to 18 millimeter FE, which is an awesome lens, by the way. I love that lens. When I select 10 millimeter, can I choose the tenth, one tenth of a second shutter speed with handheld shooting without blurry photos? Well, of course, it depends how steady your hands are. But generally, yes, um, if you have nice steady hands, then that reciprocal rule, for me anyway, tends to work with ultra wide angle lenses. Or it works with just about any lens at all. And sometimes um, if your camera has in-body image stabilization, you can find that messing around with your image a little bit at an extremely wide angle uh, focal length. Uh, so my technique for that is to turn off any in-body image stabilization and, and shoot it at least yeah one tenth of a second if you're shooting at 10 millimeter if you're on an APS-C camera you want to to make that a bit quicker but yeah yeah you're absolutely right you can do that um, all right I've got another question from YouTube from Jason Atal is the is it possible to do some kind of macro photography with the Lauer 9mm f2.8. Oh, I, I remember that lens. Is it possible to do macro photography with that lens? Uh, I know that the minimal focus distance is 12 centimeters. All right, well, if you give me a second, I will pull up uh, my test pictures from that lens. I'll pull that up right now for you. I have giant uh, backup hard drives, um, which have all the pictures I've ever taken. Uh, on them and yeah let me see for you I don't think that particular lens loves uh, is great at macro photography it's not designed to be a macro lens but actually oh here you go here's a test picture now maybe 
it might take a moment or two, but yeah, a test picture is just coming now, um, which will show you exactly how close you can get to your subject. Uh, oh gosh, I don't know if this will work. No, I don't think it's happy. My computer is being pushed to its absolute limit by this live stream. Uh, my computer is a little bit old and it, a little bit grouchy and a little bit unhappy. So uh, it doesn't, it's not enjoying live streaming. But mercifully, amazingly, it's, it's, it hasn't crashed. It was crashing earlier, but it seems to be all right now. So let me see if I can find you an example picture. Oh, there we go. Yep, it worked. So that is how close you can get with the Venus Optics 9mm f2.8. And considering just how wide angle that is, it's, it's actually not bad. That little, um, uh, that little clock you can see there is actually very small. In fact, let me show you it. Um, some people have asked me uh, about this test subject clock there is how small it is it's very tiny it was a present for my sister i have no idea where she got it or where you can get any for yourself uh, as you can see it says sam so that means it's it's obviously a, an old sony lens or what's meant to be but yeah very tiny clock that is my macro test subject so the nine millimeter f 2.8 lens um clearly isn't specifically a macro lens but it can actually get quite close to your subject uh, as as far as i remember all right, we've got even more questions. I'm only meant to be here for half an hour, but I'm really enjoying this. So uh, here we go. Jin Gi Sun, or Sun, says, "What's your first camera, and do you recommend it to kickstart on photography?" Oh my goodness me! Well, I started with film photography. I used to be a Cub Scout, and there was a special photography Cub Scout badge which you could work towards and get for your for your sleeve and my dad had to had to test me for that one because my dad knew a thing or two about mac about photography uh, whereas no one in my my scout pack did so i borrowed my old grandfather's my grandfather's old camera and a, a 50 millimeter f2 lens and i remember having a blast playing around with that but of course i, I didn't get very far because it, it was a film camera i was only nine years old so i couldn't afford to get reams and reams of film um, I suppose my photography really kicked off uh, in about 2010 with uh, my first digital SLR camera and that's when I was living and working in South Korea which was a period of my life I really look back uh, to with huge fondness maybe with rose tinted spectacles but I loved my time teaching English as a foreign language in South Korea and I picked up my first ever ca digital SLR camera there which was a Canon 550D 550D uh, or the Rebel T2i in America. I think that's called a, a very small little camera, uh, but it was the first one to have 1080p video at uh, 25 frames a second. And I was crazy about uh, filmmaking because I've done a degree in film studies years and years ago. Uh, so that was my first digital SLR camera. And my first lens I got was Canon's 50mm f1.4. Oh my goodness, I had so much fun. Uh, just living in this foreign country in the middle of summer with uh, beautiful locations everywhere to take pictures of and, and bright lights everywhere. Korea is a very colourful, South Korea is a very light, colourful country. Um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it now because it's like a 12, a 10 year old camera. Um, yeah, so I'm not, I don't really review and test cameras, I'm afraid. I, I just do the, do the lenses because I have a nice workflow going, going with that. So I, I don't have a huge knowledge of, of different cameras that you can use. I'm a big fan of mirrorless cameras now, though. I really like the Canon EOS M series of cameras and Sony's uh, mirrorless cameras as well. So I kind of recommend those as, as good starting points, really. Now I want to see if there are any more, um, any more questions. Oh, someone said they're watching the macro comparison video right now. So, oh, and someone's impressed with the small size of my <laughs> of my um, uh, macro test subject there. Uh, I'm just wondering if there are any more questions. Yeah, do we have any more questions? Commented on my photo, John Hansen. Yeah, I wonder if that could actually be it. Yeah, 
Does anyone have any more questions? If you do, then now is the time. Yeah, try helicon focus. Oh, oh someone says, oh, uh, here we go. Someone says it's soothing to listen to my voice. Let's chat for another two hours. Thank you. But my voice is kind of wearing out, actually. Uh, Achilles Labru again says, do extension tubes make the corners soft with macro photography? And what's the best free software for focus tacking? Uh, I don't know much about focus tacking, I'm afraid. Uh, that's something I'm very new to, so I can't really give you much advice on that. Although I'm sure that the other macro photographers who are coming in coming weeks will be able to give you loads and loads of advice on that. I just test the lenses, really. When it comes to um, extension tubes, I'm a big fan of extension tubes. They're great fun. I made a Photo 101 video all about uh, extension tubes. If you want to find about them, go to my YouTube channel or just write into YouTube photo 101, all one word, extension tubes. And you can see a special tutorial video uh, I made all about it, which went into the mathematics of how they work as well. When it comes to corner image quality, they sh technically they shouldn't have an effect uh, on it um, because all it's doing is magnifying the middle portion of your uh, of your image so technically it shouldn't um, but it, possibly it will that's not something I've tested the thing is with macro photography your subject is normally in the middle of your picture anyway so it doesn't really matter too <laughs> too much um, yeah to be honest so I'm going to see if there are any more questions I, th I honestly think that might be it I've been going for uh, coming up to an hour now I've really enjoyed uh, getting all these questions from you i've really really enjoyed hearing um everything you guys want to ask we should do this again sometime uh, i'm just checking if there are any any final questions on youtube uh, but i think that might be it yeah i think that's all the questions we have for today well there we go i just want to say i'll keep an eye on it just to see if any final questions come up but I do just want to say I've really, really enjoyed talking to all of you uh, today and answering questions. I'm so glad you enjoy my, my test videos and find them useful. I really enjoy making them. Uh, they're great fun. Um, yeah, uh, they're, it's good fun making my, uh, my videos. Um, and I, I'm just so glad that you enjoy it. it. It blows me away that the YouTube channel has just done so well uh, over all this time and that so many people enjoy watching them. Uh, glad to be of service. So I'll just say one or two things before I finish. Firstly, if you head on to the Venus Optics official website, which you can find on Go uh, Google really easily, the first 20 customers to use uh, this special discount code will get a little discount on any Venus Optics lens they want to buy. And that special D discount code is, all lowercase letters, CF3M44. So that code again is CF3. M44. You can find all kinds of interesting lenses over on the Venus Optics website. Loads and loads of fascinating stuff to be found there for you. Um, so there we go, a little discount code for you. I'll just check if there are any final questions. Um, no, that's about it really. Yeah, great. And I'll just give a shout out uh, to the next person. So th this is going to be a weekly thing for uh, from Venus Optics for the next few weeks for I think well, at least for the next four weeks, every Friday, you'll find a live streaming video on Facebook and YouTube. Next week, next Friday, the 10th of April, uh, you're going to get Stuart Wood, who's a YouTube personality. And he's going to be talking all about creative macro photography with light and water. Stuart Wood. And he's going to be broadcasting at the same time as this broadcast. So my guess is he's from the UK as well. So that's London time, eight o'clock, Greenwich Mean Time, seven o'clock in the evening, eight o'clock in the evening, seven o'clock in the meeting, GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, and over in the USA, that's three o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. So if you're in New York, I think it's three o'clock in the afternoon. So check that out this time next week. Stuart Wood is going to be talking about creative macro photography with light and water. 
Uh, my name's Christopher Frost and I've had a great time uh, answering your questions. Uh, God bless you all. Uh, stay safe, stay indoors. Uh, that way you can help your, your health services in the country where you are. Remember to stay safe and stay indoors. And to be honest, it's probably a good idea to order a macro lens uh, to, because they're just so much fun to shoot with indoors. So, so do that as well. And I'm going to say ciao for now. See you all later. Bye bye.